Yeah. Um, but one, one of the things that people don't see is how hard guys are working behind the scenes and, and, um, and how well they're training. And, you know, I, I think today we lacked a little bit of cohesion because we, when you do make those many changes, you, you do lose a bit of your rhythm and that's a risk for us. But um, if, if we don't do it, then um, we're not quite sure where we sit with some of the guys in the squad. And you, and you don't know when you're going to lose someone if you've got someone in a particular position. So you, you've got to keep growing your, your depth, I guess. Um, and, you know, we've got a very short-term focus, long-term view. And I know that's a paradox, but it's a paradox that you almost have to employ so that you best vaccinate against future injury or, or uh, future changes or form and at the same time you offer opportunities to, to players who've demonstrated that they, uh, a number of them have been in the test arena before, you know, guys like Harry Wilson, he, he's coming back from injury, Len Nikitao coming back from injury, so, you know, it's, it's not, um, you know, it's not like the first week where there were seven debutants. Um, what have you seen from him? Yeah, he's fast. He's, he's, you know, he's he's very quick. Um, he's enthusiastic. He's a young, a young player that, um, you know, is at the start of his career, and um, and we want to try to kickstart the career, because the only way you can try to kickstart a career is to is to put them in the cauldron, and um, best prepare them, but. You know, see how they measure up, I guess. Joe, how do you find the balance between having to build that depth and ahead of the rugby championship against a team that is extremely dangerous and there is a big risk, you know, in terms of putting out a raw team against the likes of Georgia? How do you find that balance between you need to win, but you also need to build your, yeah. your squad? Yeah, it's, it's an impossible balance to get dead right because you're not sure till the team goes out there that you've. Um, you know, you've you've done the right thing, um, and, and we have huge respect for Georgia. We'd predict that they won't they won't have as many changes, anything like as many changes, and they will see a, an opportunity, especially on the back of recent wins. Um, you know, Wales, Italy, um, last weekend against France. I mean, uh, against Japan, um, and and even you know some of the other big teams where they've. They've definitely been in the game for a long time, so um, yeah, I, I, I guess people just have, have to have faith in the, in the changes, and, um, and we've got faith in the changes. We do believe that we're, we're putting a good side out, and they'll demonstrate that, um, but I'm sure the Georgians will have something to say about that. You said, uh, I think it was two, two or three weeks ago, you haven't had the team for a long time, you've never felt so underprepared. Are you feeling a bit more prepared now, even though you've only had three weeks in? Uh, not with 10 changes, probably. Um, you know, I, I certainly have got to know the players better. Um, and when, when you get to know players, you, I, I think the, the level of trust increases. Their trust in the systems we're trying to build. Um, but, you know, systems survive the, the, the first phase of the game and then, you know, you see something different or they do something different um, or, or you're put under pressure and you become just a little bit destabilised, that's when you need uh, a little bit of experience. But last time, uh, you know, the Wallabies played Georgia, the the halves were the same, you know. Um, so it's, it's not like they come in absolutely raw. So they bring a little bit of uh, knowledge around Georgia, even though they've had coaching changes a lot of their personnel are the same. Looking at that back row, um, Harry Wilson coming in, was there a sort of temptation to sort of see him come back to the Reds against Wales, or what did you see to sort of make you feel like it's the right best best path of his progression? Well, I, I think he, he's been in camp with us for a couple of weeks, so um, you know, sending him back to to the Reds doesn't really, you know, test him within our framework. Um, yep. We've, we've got a couple of guys in the Reds that we will definitely be watching uh, on Friday, and uh, well, more than a couple. But uh, because he's been with us, uh, I think he's better to stay with us and, and, and play against Georgia. You're right, 
that there was a degree of temptation to try to spread it a little bit um, thinner, but uh, with Liam Wright injured and uh, Lange Gleeson just having rolled his ankle, um, we felt it was better to, to keep uh, Harry with us. Just get an update on Liam. I think last you spoke, he was sort of getting back to full training. Is there sort of just been a setback there, or what's the story? With Lange? With Liam. Oh, with Liam? Yeah. Uh, d his, his shoulder's just um, taken a bit longer than we would have liked. So um, I don't know if he'll make it for the, the, the Reds-Tonga game, but um, he, he just wasn't in time for us uh, this week. And um, we'll, we'll just see how that pans out over the over the next few weeks. We obviously have to name a, another squad in, in maybe two and a half weeks' time. And we'll that'll give us time to just have a look at what the squad has achieved, and then and then build on uh, whatever we feel we need to have for the for the TRC. Was all these changes were were they all voluntary? Were any enforced by injury at all? Yeah, I just um, Lange Gleeson obviously uh, was was injury, but there's there, there's a few with um, you know uh, a few knocks that that we had. Um, you know, Andrew Callaway took a took a bang uh, in the game, and uh, there were a couple of others. And because they're not 100% at the start of the week, we just thought it's better to forge ahead and and be decisive, make some changes. And um, Kel's trained really well today, um, so you know, keeping him in the frame, I, I, I think he's playing really well for us. So, uh, and he's got experience. He brings good voice on the edges or at the back. Um, and is is uh, is good, good kind of cover for for that whole back three. So, yeah, there, w there was a few guys like that, um, and there's some guys who've got some real mileage. Jake Gordon played a lot of Super Rugby. He played the first two tests against Wales and played quite big minutes in both those test matches. So, um, to give Tate and and Nick White a, an opportunity to share the minutes this this week is is. Um, it's part of that competitive drive between those three. Those three have been competing for the Wallaby Nine jersey for quite some time, and and they um, they are very good mates and they're very competitive individuals. So it's a yeah, it's a good balance. Just on Harry Wilson, he's had a couple of false starts since debuting in 2020. What do you think you need to see from him, and how does he take his game forward to become a constant kind of member of that back row? Because you see it in Super. Um, yeah, I, th I think with Harry, he, he's a good athlete. You know, for a big man, he's a good athlete, and so we, we want to see the athleticism. He's he's got um, he's got good good skill set. I, th I think probably um, just the consistency of um, of that skill set. He's got to demonstrate that every time and staying in the game. Um, you know. Because of the way some teams play, he plays on the edge quite a bit, and I think sometimes he can drift a little bit, and then he's not in the game. And um, with a guy like Harry, I think he's got to stay in the game. He's even if he's not immediately around the ball, he's got to stay connected to what's happening so that he's ready when the ball does become uh, available. And um, you know, if he is, uh, he, he's a he's a weapon. Mm. There's a sense of probably nervousness in Australia. Because Not really. I mean, um, oh, I think I said last week I'm always worried. So I, I, I don't think that changes for me at all. I'm nervous about how things will pan out and, and how the game will pan out. Um, but we've got a lot of combinations in there. Uh, so, you, you know, you've got Billy Pollard having his first start, but Alan Al is right, right alongside him. Um, you know, coming off the bench, you've got, um, you know, a, a, a Reds front row. So that they know each other. So we've, we've kind of tried to keep a balance of, of players who are comfortable playing alongside each other and, and uh, I think Mike Cron's doing a really good job building our scrum and that's not a, a sudden thing, that's that's a, a longer term thing but um, 
it, it, it's going well so far, and I, I think our our, our line out um, eerily has been really good. And I think we've had really good defensive pressure, and you know, in the second half against Wales, um, I think that was a pivotal part of the game that we we stole a few of their line outs. So building that pack, and then in the back. In the back line, there's there's actually a lot of guys who played together. Hunter and and Lenny Ikatiav, they played together quite a lot. And and Lenny is a relatively experienced Wallaby. Um, on, on the edges, you know, Filippo has he's been outstanding for us anyway. Uh, Tom Wright, he's been fullback the whole time. And and um, I thought Ben Donaldson finished the game well last week. So um, Tate, he's you know, he, he's captain the Wallabies. So, I, I, you know, yeah, I'm nervous, but uh, I don't think there's a real nervousness in the team. I think there's a real, uh, I detect there's a, a, an excitement. They, they, they just want to go out and they and they want to get into the game and, and start playing. And when you've got a team like that, I, I'm a little bit excited as well. So, you know, uh, there's always that, trying to find that equilibrium between a nervousness and a, and, a, and an anticipation around what, what they can, what, what they hopefully will deliver. Chill, Last uh, couple of things. Are you a champ, uh, Are you attuned to the fact that the, you know, the mood of rugby or the, the perception of rugby in this country is tied to the Wallabies and whether they rise or fall? You know what I mean? So there's an expectation to win this game. Um, yep. You know, God forbid something else happens, but the, the, the game itself is tied to your fortune. Well, I. I I think every national team is is very conscious of that. And, uh, it, it was the same in Ireland, and and when the game took off in Ireland, it was a lot on the back of a couple of the big provinces, but but a lot on the back of the uh, of the team getting to number one in the world and, and knocking over um, a, a number of the big nations. Um, certainly with the All Blacks, boy, you feel some pressure there because um, you know the. The game is tied to the All Blacks. Uh, there's such a, a deep-rooted history of uh, of achievement there that um, it's a massive responsibility. Uh, but the players, having been in that environment, the players see it as an opportunity, and they're hungry to to um, to build upon the you know the 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 identity that they have and and, and the history that they've built. So um, I'm hoping that this Wallabies squad and we've always you know, I've been um, really appreciative of the squad. I, I remember the after the first Wales test, uh, Liam saying, you know, uh, I thought it was, a, it was a great team effort, but it was a great squad effort to prepare the team. And um, and at some stage, you, you've got to recognise that and, and offer some opportunity. So, yeah, I, I just hope that people keep their confidence um, and... Um, and the support makes a difference. It definitely adds uh, a little bit of a positive edge to a player, you know, when, when they run out and and the, the crowd is there and they see lots of yellow and they and they feel the support of the of the crowd. I, I think it just helps lift their lift their performance. And so if we could get a you know an upward cycle there, it, it would be it, it would be really positive. And we know that's the responsibility for that falls on us. We, um, we've, we've got to deliver a decent performance. How, how, much, how much time and effort have you put in this week into kind of more effectively counting the driving walls of opposing teams there? Yeah, <laughs> me personally, not a huge amount. I, I wouldn't have much impact in a driving wall. Um, but I, I know that Jeff Parling has, has worked really hard on it. Um, and uh, some of that, I, I think the way we structure it, I, I, I watch them present and and, uh, and organise the players. I think I think we've got a really clear plan. I think our execution of the plan hasn't been as good as it needed to be. So, um, you know that that that's a it's it's a really good work on for us, and and we need to we need to be better there, without a doubt. No. But what about Alex? Pretty, pretty cool. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it, it will be if, if he gets off the bench and, and, and gets on there. Um, I know it means something to, to, to Alex himself. Um, you know, he, he's, he's driven to achieve um, and, and he's, not a, he's not a young prop. He, he's experienced, he's, he's played at the level obviously in, in, in a test match for the All Blacks and um, uh, he, he had a little bit of uh, an up and down season with the Reds with injury but uh, when he was available um, I thought he did a good job and uh, he's very keen to grab the opportunity with both hands. He knows the, there's, a, there's a few other guys coming back from injury and, and that it's a hopefully a competitive position for us once we're selecting the TRC squad. So, um, it, it, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted for him. Um, and, it, you know, at the same time, um, James Slipper, he, he, he got a whack on the shoulder and um, probably could have played, but it, it, certainly if it, if it was a, a final or, or something. Uh, but, as I said, we wanted to show faith in the squad and... and um, Alex is pretty excited about the faith we've shown and, and the opportunity he's got.